real estate coverage checkup. So these are the things if you came to me and said, okay, yeah, I have this property. Can you check this out for me? My sort of my 20 minute uh, checkup would look like this. Um, is replacement cost of your building correct? So I would do evaluation on your building and I'm shocked at how many are either over or under. They're very often not right. And if it's over, it means you're paying too much. And if it's under, it means that if you had, a, had to rebuild your building, you're not, you're not gonna have enough money to, to make it, to make, get back what you had. Um, do you have adequate liability coverage? So if you're in a situation where you've got multiple people in, in the house and people get hurt, if you have two people living there and they sue you, or you have five or six people living there and they all sue you, you need a little more money to handle the six than the two. So do you have enough liability and how do you structure that? So if you've got multiple properties, you may have a, a $2 million limit on all the properties, but then look at having something like an umbrella limit over the top. So if any one of them, um, you pop the 2 million, then you've got some other coverage there. So it's not hitting you personally. Because what happens if you get sued for more than what your insurance is, your insurance company comes to you, they send you a letter and say, hey, we have a lawsuit for $5 million. You have 2 million in coverage. What do you want us to do? Because we're in this together. You on three, me on two. You're, it's not like you spend their money first and then it comes out of your pocket. You're in there together at whatever the pro rata share is typically. So, and they don't want to spend any money because they don't want you to sue them saying that you didn't spend the insurance money right. So you're in it off the hop. So you want to think about, do you have enough coverage for, for any liabilities? Uh, water damage, again, whether it's sewer backup, overland flood, any of those things. Um, it's appalling to me that a lot of houses that people are renting or landlords of, they have $25,000 of sewer backup coverage. That's it. A lot of big companies, when I look at homes, home insurance, a lot of them only have $25,000. They're just gonna write a check. You have a sewer backup, you're gonna write a check for $25,000 and go, here you go. And that's it, they walk away. I had to do a basement with a sewer backup. $25,000 is not enough, not enough. And if you have, a, if it's your personal home and you have a, a space in there where you've got nice furniture and you've done it up nice, you're going to need a way more than that. So please take a look at that. Talk, talk to people you know and say, what's the water damage look like? Do you have flood? You definitely need flood if it's commercial for sure. Um, is your rental income coverage adequate? Because if your house, um, you have a fire and you can't rent your house anymore, how are you going to cover your mortgage? The insurance company will pay you for that, for that lost income. But you want to make sure the number is right. And again, I ask people this question is how much are you charging per month? Oh, we're charging 3000 per month. So it's $36,000 and their, 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 their limit that they've got on their policy is 25,000. So that means they're short nine. So if they're counting on that 36,000, they're not going to get it unless they change the limit. The other thing that I look at for a lot of these, is the rebuilding clause typically in these policies are 12 months. That's not long enough to rebuild a house in Toronto anymore. You need at least two years. So that 12 month clause you need to look at extending. Um, if you have uh, tenants, are you added, do you ask them to add you to their policy? So you can add, um, as a, if you have a tenant and they, you ask the tenant as part of your uh, rental agreement or lease agreement to have their own insurance for their contents and liability for what happens in their space, you can ask to be added to their policy. That means if something happens in their space, um, their insurance company will protect you as well because you're added to their policy. Otherwise, if I walk up, the, if I walk, if I'm in their house and I slip and, or I'm in a property and I slip and fall, both two insurance companies are going to be fighting. One of them is going to be saying, it's not my fault. The other one saying, it's not my fault. They're going to want to split on whatever that is. If it happens in your tenant space and you're on their policy, their policy will represent both of you. So if I'm representing, when I'm doing tenant coverage, I say, don't do that to the tenant make the landlord do his own thing, make him represent himself. But if I'm representing the landlord, I say, ask all your tenants to add you to their policy. So it's kind of which side of the fence I'm sitting on. I have since sold these properties, but when I was a landlord, it was a condition with a lease and I would not turn over keys until I had that certificate naming me as named insured. Yeah, because that thing is what they'll do is they'll say, yeah, I have insurance. They'll get a certain insurance certificate and they'll cancel that for a month. So the only way you're going to know that the insurance is in force is if you're on as additional insured, because then you get, you get paper. Otherwise you don't know. That's why you add to that. It's not, not just an evidence of insurance, not just a, Hey, I've got insurance. Here's my, here's my, my sheet is to be added on so that you get the paperwork from the insurance company.